Hey all. Uh, since I really don't need much prodding to bring out the Schecter, <laughs> I figured I'd go through this one. Someone was asking for an actual explanation of the chords of uh, Don't Let Go of the Coat. Kind of an overlooked tune, I think. Uh, one of my favorites, though, after the moon period. And uh, it's, it's a good example of, of the way Pete likes to do a few things. I, uh, on the Private Tricker channel, you'll find an acoustic version that has the solo in it. But someone wanted just this, you know, main electric part. And uh, so I'm going to run through that. But I'll show you the chords first. Uh, it starts in G. Those are almost all the chords right there. Uh, but uh, Pete does this thing in the intro and, and through the... It's the main riff of the song, really. Right. And that's a, that's a thing you hear all over Pete's uh, songwriting. And you'll see pictures of him playing a G chord like this, especially when he's doing the windmills. You'll see a lot of that shape. And that's the way he does uh, a lot of his G chords uh, as G5. He plays it as a G5. A lot of his chords are fifth chords. Um, but uh, he would play it like this with his thumb over the top on the low E string on the third fret, muting the A string, uh, and then the B and E strings at the third fret. So you end up with a fifth chord because it just is G, D, G, D, G with the A string muted. So a two note fifth chord. And uh, so he does this thing, right? I, I, I've actually seen people play it as G, B minor, C, D. But that's not it. That's, that's more like Uncle John's band. It's not that. It's, uh, it's this thing. So that's just walking, walking down one fret on that high E. So now you can understand why he does the G like this, rather than like that, because if you want to do, I mean you could do it like that, but it's a little awkward that way, but this way is easy. So you just kind of strum through, in fact, you are playing that G note at the third fret on the low E, but you don't really hit it in this tune very much. You're concentrating on those high. The only time in the song he plays the, this chord, it's that, that third chord of the intro, and he doesn't play it again. But he's doing a, a G, C, it's a D chord, except for this one version of it in the intro. Instead of doing the high E at the third fret, he does low E at the third fret. So it goes, it has a little bit of a different feel than the rest of the progression of the song. <laughs> You don't play that high E. And then again. The second time through he plays as a regular D. I don't know why, but it just sounds cool <laughs> the way he does it. Uh, and then for the, the all the verses, it's the same thing. So that's the verse chorus, and it's the same for the chorus. into another verse and a guitar solo and it's and after the guitar solo it comes out E minor trying to understand or trying to explain E minor D but you never understand C and I, I can hear on some of those C chords he's holding that high E string at the third fret I need your body I just can't demand it that part minor 7 so do it like a regular B minor 7 but make that 7 note up here the high E string at the 5th fret I won't let go like a stray that E that's C D Pretty sure that's the whole song, so let's run through it.
I don't think I had too much trouble. It's, it's as you can hear, a little repetitive. But uh, the the genius of it really is in the lyric more than anything else. Um, good luck with it. Let me know if you have trouble.